If you've ever tried performing electronic music live, you probably know by now that getting started is the hardest part. There are many ways to approach live performance with synthesizers and drum machines to replicate the style and sound of your recorded tracks. You could go to the most general approach and whip out a laptop on stage running a live focused DAW such as Mainstage, but I'm personally not a fan of bringing a full computer into a live environment. You could also pick up one of the numerous sequencers out there, but many can be quite expensive and most don't support audio synchronization. Or you could be full on crazy and run the whole performance with looping pedals or sequence on the spot with a drum machine. This is definitely an option if you're talented enough, but without a full band, I'd rather skip on this option. Clearly, I've been looking for the answer to this question for many years now, exactly four to be precise. Back in 2017, I started a project I called the Octopi, named after the 8-channel sound card I was using and the Python programming language that was running the whole thing. Unfortunately, I left it in an unfinished state until I finally picked it back up this year. After lots of tweaking, I think this project is ready for the stage. Now let's show off the hardware a little bit. The device runs on the Raspberry Pi 3 model A+, with a Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus standard, and a little custom MIDI board that uses a serial connection on the Pi's GPI header. There's also a simple LED that I added to the MIDI board, which indicates status. I originally tried using an original Model A Raspberry Pi, but the performance of the 700MHz single-core processor just wasn't stable enough to provide clean, synchronized audio. To finish it all off, I printed a modified version of this case I found on Thingiverse. I chose this one because the sliding tray should make it very easy to service live if needed. If you wanted to build this yourself, you could choose a number of hardware options to get the same effect. I made the software as configurable as possible so that you could use pretty much whatever you want as long as it's ALSA compatible. I'm going to run through the software configuration real quick for anyone that's interested in putting something like this together. The requirements are fairly minimal, but we'll have to install a few apt and pip packages. Once you've written the Raspberry Pi OS Lite image, what used to be Raspbian, to an SD card and loaded it into your Pi, you'll need to get access to its command line either through SSH on the network or directly with the monitor and keyboard. Then just run the provided commands to install all dependencies. This may take a while depending on which Raspberry Pi you're using and what kind of internet connection you have. Once all that is done, clone the repository into your home folder using this command. So at this point, you may want to copy the configuration file into your root home folder, which is just slash root. The command should be something like this. When we run our program, we'll be running it as the root user in order to automatically mount and scan a USB drive for our media files. I would now go ahead and run the main program, octo.py, with Python 3 with the verbose tag. When the program launches, it will scan all of your ALSA audio and MIDI devices. If you're using the same configuration as me, and you've already set up the Hi-Fi Berry, which is a whole other thing, you'll want to use sysdefault for your audio and GPIO for MIDI. GPIO just tells the program to use serial MIDI instead of an ALSA device. In order to automatically mount a USB drive, SDA1 should be the ticket. I'd also enable preloading to make the device much more responsive by loading all of the media into RAM when it boots. There are a few other settings in there to play around with if you've got a specific use case. Since we probably don't want to use a computer keyboard at every show, we'll need to set the Pi to automatically log in and run the program after it's finished booting. You can do this by running sudo raspy config and going into system options then enabling boot slash auto login. Then exit out of raspy config. It may ask you to reboot, which you might as well do. Once we're back in, edit the .bashrc file using nano in your home folder. Go to the very bottom and add this command. This will run the program as the root user whenever the Pi finishes booting up and logging in. You may want to go ahead and test this command out just to make sure everything is working as intended. I've documented the installation process and some other tips on the GitHub repository for this project linked below. Before you shut down the Pi for good, I'd also recommend making your SD card read-only by enabling the overlay file system under performance options in Raspi Config. This will prevent any unintentional shenanigans from bricking your Pi when you pull the plug on it. Okay, okay, now that we're done with the nitty gritty, let's get to the fun part. In my live setup, I've got two synthesizers, the Base Station 2 and MoFo X4, and a drum machine, the MC505. I also use this for some extra sounds when needed since it has its own sampling and synth engine that can be used for much more than just percussion. I'm also using an Akai MPX-8 to trigger the songs that I want and a Muki MAM-X2 to mix all of these line levels together. The Akai MPX-8 is connected directly to the Octopi's MIDI end to control it, and then the rest of the devices are daisy-chained together from the output of the Octopi MIDI out. 
For each device, make sure that the MIDI through output is configured correctly to prevent the Octopi's messages from getting stripped out at any point in the chain. Now, the Octopi is designed to work with pretty much anything you throw at it, but I find that 16-bit 44.1 kHz WAV files and Type-0 MIDI files tend to do the best. In order to convert your final studio mix into a blend of backing tracks and MIDI data for live keyboards, you'll need to spend some time in your DAW before booting up the Octopi. I personally use Reaper, and the process is fairly simple depending on the song I'm working on. If I've already got all the MIDI there, it's just a matter of making sure the MIDI channels are set up correctly and that all of my program change events are where they need to be. If not, you may need to go back into your song and reconstruct all the MIDI notes you need for playback. Then you should be able to export the MIDI and WAV files in the appropriate formats. Just make sure to include the tempo map in the MIDI file. On most computers, you should be able to open it back up in your media player and it'll attempt to play it to some degree. As long as everything feels good enough, you should be ready to transfer it to the Octopi. Oh, and I haven't really mentioned this yet, but the Octopi should be able to do anything on MIDI, not just play notes. You'll never have to scroll through your patches halfway through a song again since MIDI bank and program change messages can take care of all of that for you. You could also program in CC messages for things like the mod wheel, but I prefer to leave those to the live performance. To prepare the USB drive you'll use with the Pi, you may need to format it as FAT32 if it isn't already. Then just copy your .wav and .mid files over to the root folder of the drive. Folder scanning isn't currently supported, but I doubt you'll need that anyway. Make sure that all the files for each song are named exactly the same, and if you only need WAV or only MIDI for a song, don't worry, the program should be able to use either independently. In order to get your songs in the right order, I find it best to add the number you want before it. The Octopi automatically sorts each song alphabetically, and the numbering should force the songs into the order you want. Now eject your USB drive, plug it in, and power up your Pi. If you have preloading enabled, the status LED, which can also be enabled in the config file, will light up while it's loading all the song files into memory. If you don't, it should just blip for a second to indicate that the boot process is complete. Once it's off, you should be ready to trigger the playback of your music. The song selection works by the MIDI note number received. So the first song on the list will be note number one, the second note number two, and so on. The MIDI note number zero will always be reserved as a stop button for whatever is being played. With my trigger, the MPX-8, it's very easy to set the note number of each pad, but if you're using a keyboard, you may have to bring the octave all the way down to its lowest setting in order to get those note values. Currently, MIDI through on the Octopi isn't supported, but that may be a good feature to add in in case you want to use a master keyboard with synth modules down the chain. And that's pretty much it. You should have a working Octopi. I still have yet to test the Octopi in the stresses of live performance, but I have high hopes that it'll provide a good foundation for everything else that could potentially go wrong. If you have any suggestions or issues, go ahead and message me directly, or add them onto the GitHub repo. And if you decide to build your own Octopi, I would love to see how other people are using it in their live rigs. Ciao!